Hey guys, it's Adam from Tested with another episode about space suits. This, of course, is my Mercury suit, which I covered on Tested many years ago, built in the late 50s and early 60s for American astronauts, the first American astronauts, the Mercury 7, uh, and based roughly off a Mark IV high altitude suit built by the US Navy, this is often considered to be the first American spacesuit. But it's not. And as a collector of spacesuits and as a obsessive completist, I've decided to replicate what is, in fact, the first spacesuit. And that is, and that is, and that is this bad boy, Wiley Post's first spacesuit. Now, that Mercury suit was developed in the 50s and used in the late 50s and early 60s. This was used by Wiley Post to fly at impossible altitudes in 1934. And by impossible, I mean altitudes that would have killed him because of the lack of oxygen. He built the very first, he built, he built and utilized the first pressure suit. And that's what I'm going to replicate. Today, we're gonna make the helmet and we're gonna make it out of foam. So clearly this is based on an early diving suit. Uh, this is the same idea, although its pressure requirements are vastly different. Um, the attachment method is still quite similar. In the same way that a diving bell helmet has large wing nuts attaching it to the suit, Wiley Post's suit that he flew in successfully had the same thing. It was a neck entry suit, so that was the only seam. And once he sealed it with what looks to me between 26 and 32 wing nuts, I realized I've got to find some antique wing nuts, and I found one. This, I found on eBay. It cost me, like, I think 70 bucks for this one. Okay, I might have gotten taken, but it matches in every way the exact dimensions and shape of these from Wiley Post suit. So, Freddy here in the shop made a mold and cast up a whole bunch. So we are going to be uh, 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 prepping these, priming them, and aestheticizing them for attachment to my helmet while I take care of the helmet construction. My material of choice for the helmet is this, EVA foam. Yeah, uh, I was thinking about some other harder materials and then I thought, oh, this would be perfect and it actually might be almost comfortable. Um, funnily enough, this is the technique championed by a friend of Tested, Bill Duran, who happens to be in the Tested offices this very day. I know that doesn't, he's not gonna necessarily show up in this video, but you should know that he's nearby. For patterning, I'm bringing along a friend, me. Um, luckily, I have this thing for making a perfect pattern from, so I'm gonna start by making a pattern of the collar and also trying to figure out just how big this helmet actually is from side to side. It's, it's bigger than it looks, which is good, because I want the ability to move my head around in there. I, it's gonna get claustrophobic. All right, here we go. <laughs> it already looks like a spacesuit. But like from a Buck Rogers movie, not from like reality. I'm start. I, I I bought a second. Uh, I bought a, a second wing nut when I did this, and to be honest, it might be a better wing nut in terms of the size. Uh, I'm gonna try laying it out like that and see if I get. This feels too crowded to me. This is the right number of wing nuts, but it feels too crowded, and I think I've got the size wrong. So I had a backup, which is smaller. I'm gonna prep these and lay them out.
Nice, that's a pretty good distribution. That feels a lot better. That looks a lot more like what I'm looking at. Yeah, yeah, all right. I'm gonna shorten these just a tad. I'm gonna shorten these down to about there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, right. How many? Uh, I'm going with that distribution. Yep. So. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. Twenty. Less than I imagined. Let's prep 24. So let's glue each one to that. Okay. Just with a dot of crazy glue there. Okay. And then once those are set, and we're gonna do um, 24 of them. All right. Once those are set, I would want you to take a, 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 a long board that holds all 24, put some double stick tape down on it, mm -hmm. and then prime these all black. Uh, and then they'll be ready for aesthetics. Awesome, sounds good. Fabulous, here you go. All right, so I've got the pattern for the neck ring, and I'm gonna transfer that pattern to this, uh, looks like 3 8 foam that I've got. I'm gonna make two layers of that, one for the full neck and then one for the, the, the border around it. And then I'm gonna start making the, the head surround. This is tricky. I'm, uh, I'm working with this uh, sheet of warbler here because I'm, the dimensionality of the black foam is actually problematic for me for my helmet part. And uh, the warbler may give me exactly what I want here. Let's see here. Oh, that's what? No, no. So clearly that's no good. Here. Let's crack it open a bit. That's terrible. That, that's no good. That's too tight. Ugh. Yeah, this is just gonna have to be comfort based and then we'll base the rest of it off of that. There we go. Let's see. That's it. That's much better. <laughs> that sounds really weird, doesn't it? Yeah. Different movie, this one's reality. Whenever you're gluing, it never hurts to add some tooth to what you're gluing. That means to add some dimension. I put little scratches into the plastic. That's places for the glue to hold on to the plastic. And you can never have too much tooth. It's great.
This is what I call a mission critical joint. The whole costume rests on this joint of the helmet. Uh, ergo, I'm going to use two applications of contact cement. One right after the other. That'll just give me a lot more grab for this. The trick with contact cement is to make sure that you've coated both sides of your equation of the joint that you're gluing and that you've gotten it dry enough. You don't want it to be too tacky. That means it's still kind of wet. You want it to have flashed off most of its solvent. But after two hours, it's actually flashed off so much you won't be able to glue it anymore. So you've got this limited amount of time. Two hours is a rough figure. It's different for different contact cements. The simple thing is you want it to be tacky but not sticky. That's the real trick. This is called dry transferring. I use a piece of paper to cover up most of the glue seam in order to get it started. And then that allows me the ability to finesse that seam without going too far. And I pull out the paper. Out of the way of that seam. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, 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 come on. Ooh. That's pretty good. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Da -da -da. So, I have to... This is also not far off of how Lord Buckethead made his bucket head, I would guess. Who's Lord Buckethead? Oh, ho, ho, ho. just one of my heroes. It's a nice tall bucket, so I've got a lot of room to mess it up. Here we go. That's... Yeah, I started. All right. Let's see here. Front. Oh, clearly, clearly, I need to recut this. Excellent. Bellissimo. Just a hole for the neck. Now that I've got this, now I can start to look at that. Is that about the distance? Yeah. That and that. Yeah, that's about the same. And then down here. That is feeling like what I'm looking for. Okay. Now, now I have that. I need its border, right? Yeah, I do. So, come and do this. Doink, 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 doink. And draw. This border. Okay. 
Hey. Um, great. Let us join them. Before I glue on the outer ring, I want to get it to fit the shape of me. That way, when I do all my gluing of this to this, to this to this, it all stays together, right? Right, yeah, exactly. Preach it, brother. Okay, here we go. Now, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Here we go. It's starting to look like a thing. Do I say that in every build? I'm pretty sure I do. It's always the point at which I get the most excited when what I'm making really does start to look like a thing. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Now, the trick is here it's welded. And this isn't made of aluminum, so how am I gonna weld it? Well, I will show you. This is how I'm making my welds. Yep, hot glue welds. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make it look like a weld. Um, hold on, let's just see how messy a weld it is. Oh, it's a good and messy weld. That should be fun. Okay, here we go. Start at the back simply because you don't wanna practice on the hero side. I'm merely using the compressed air to blow the heat away from the hot glue to set it quickly because I want it to be structural there. And I succeeded. All right, here we go. Hot glue is so thermally reactive. I mean, it's a thermal-based glue, so it definitely expands and contracts a lot with the heat. It makes it poor for rigid surfaces, but holy hell, if you can grab two sides of something with hot glue and you've got some tooth to it, you can hold a lot together with it. I guess. I guess I should just try it, right? All right, here we go. Dude. Dude, that's awesome. All right. Wait, my forehead, my eyes, right? There. Yeah, that's actually pretty darn good. The tricky part about this circle is that it's not circular on the surface of this tube, right? It's a projection of a circle onto the tube, which means that out at the extent, the, let's say I'm at nine o'clock here, the nine o'clock is more oval. It's more oval in the nine and three direction because it's a projection against, yeah. So that's the tricky part here. Huh. Let's make sure I can see out of it. There we go. <laughs> Color me relieved.
Yep. Just like that. Look at that. <laughs> Can I go into how exciting and awesome it is to have this? There we go. Oh, that's not that bad. I can move my head around in here. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Yeah. All right. Okay, so now, now I need this thing, which is Okay, so this is, uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, look at that. We are coming along. I cannot believe he flew a plane for hours in a helmet like this. That is an intense, an intense bit of scientific testing, Wiley Post. Hey, I did some work while you weren't looking. Yeah, I did. I, I, I came in really early this morning. <laughs> This is, some, this is sometimes how this goes. I came in really early this morning uh, because I wanted to get a coat of white PVA glue onto this because I wanted to get to painting by the end of today. So uh, I did some final hot glue work. I slump molded the, uh, the, the cap and this was made by actually taking a shape out of MDF heating up this warbler, which is a thermal plastic, and then uh, slumping it into here to get the right shape. And the shape of the original suit, yeah, that shape is pretty uneven, so like I wasn't too worried about it being a little lumpy. I think it's perfect. That's hot glued in. Then I gave this whole thing a coat of primer, and then I gave it a coat of white glue, and we're doing great. But it's time to talk about some of the ancillary parts, like sticking out of this side, of uh, uh, the, the suit's face is a little barb fitting. And I made that on the lathe this morning. 
Um, that's just a piece of resin that I laid and then I cut it at 45 and glued it at a right angle uh, and then put a little quarter 20 nut on there. So that goes in there. I made this out of resin. I mean, obviously you can buy these out of brass, but I didn't want a lot of weight out in front of my face. I just like, you know, costume weight is a thing and every place you can eliminate it, you should. So I made that. And then there's also at the other side is this guy. And this is beautiful. They still make these. I was able to buy one on Amazon, but again, it's solid brass, it's too heavy. So yesterday, Freddie cast me this one. And Freddie made all the castings of the wing nuts around here. And so now, while I finish up the last details on this and get them right, Freddie's going to be adding some rub and buff to the metal parts of this. Because I'm going to paint this and then I'm going to do the final assembly to get it all right. So Freddie, how's it going over here? Pretty good. We have all of these guys prepped and ready for rub and buff. Awesome. There's that. So these two bad boys get uh, brass rub and buff. All right. Um, and then all of these guys get a steel rub and buff. Let me bring over the drawer. Yeah, I don't know if I have it. Go ahead and take a look. This is all the tubes of rub and buff are here. All right. Take a look and see. If I don't have a dark steel, that's totally fine. I don't need one. We could just darken it with a wash. Ebony, no. Um, you know kind of what they should look like. We've got the picture as reference. I want it to look like, actually, I want them to look pretty close to the original, you know, like this finish. Gotcha. That kind of With modeled. Kind of dirty patina. Beat up, little exactly. Little. Right. So, uh, yeah, you got your work cut out for you. Have All fun. Right. Sounds good. Hole number one goes here. Hole number two. I'm gonna do the first test drill in the back. So if I screw it up. Not bad. Easy peasy. Okay, am I forgetting anything here? Oh, right, yes, 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 I am forgetting something. There's that bad boy right there. Okay. Let's see here. It looks kind of like that, doesn't it? It does. It looks kind of just like that. Oh, nice. All right, so if that is that, great, great, great. <laughs> you look, 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 look. It's like, a, it's like a little nut with threads and a hex on it. And I had in my box, my log jam, a little nut with hex on it. It's like, it's like perfect. Like a prophecy fulfilled. Yeah. Okay, uh, so. Actually, even that's even better because it's lower profile. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, I'm so psyched. Okay. Yes. Valve, okay. I'm gonna give this thing another coat of paint and then I'm actually gonna give it a few more coats of some paint to kind of even out its texture. That's perfect. A little bit of ebony and a little bit of silver will get a nice good finish. That is beautiful, lovely. So I, I ran into some difficulties with the white glue. Um, this is the first time I've used it to coat a whole project like um, foam smiths do, like Builderan. Um, and I ended up with some drippies and they really um, shattered the illusion that this is made of steel. Uh, so I'm just giving it some successive coats of matte paint uh, and sanding down the drippy details as I see them before giving it its final coat of gloss paint. And it's not a perfect surface by any means. Uh, so I'm not being super precious about it, but it can't look like there's drips. 
That's all. I don't know about you, but I'm really pleased with how well this is turning out. Nice. Now I'm going to want it to spin, so I need a lazy Susan. In order to be able to weather this helmet and add some other colors without messing up the underlying silver, I'm uh, sealing it with an all-clad uh, lacquer, all-clad two lacquer gloss clear coat ALC 310. Yeah, provides a really robust clear coat and it doesn't mess up the silver. Well, it did actually mess up the silver a little bit. Made it just a tiny bit less shiny, but I can live with that. It wasn't a chrome finish to begin with. And actually, as this lacquer is drying, it is getting shinier. But it will provide me a really nice, robust coat to weather against. I'm gonna do a little masking for this outer ring. I'm just... I know I should wait for the paint to get drier, but I'm too impatient. It's kind of my thing. I'm impatient. All right. Ooh, that's very subtle, but that's what I'm going for. That's exactly right to me. That feels like just the right kind of difference. Mm. I can't even tell you how hard it is for me with all the wing nuts sitting there painted and the brass parts and the other stuff not to attach it all right now. Oh, I really want to attach it, but I won't. Gonna stay chill. Don't, don't. There we 
go. <laughs> This technique that I've done of painting many of the parts separately and putting them back together uh, after painting is a really, really great way to add a lot of value to your paint job. And now I'm really just going through and looking for areas that should be dirty but aren't. And then also looking for kind of like those artifacts of use that kind of tell the story. So anything that's a little too shiny, I just, I, I hit it and I give it a little dirt stain, and if it doesn't work, I pull it back off again, but I leave a little dirt because you can't quite always pull it back off. It's just an ongoing, oh, I'm having trouble not cursing my pleasure right now. This, this is so exceeding my hopes and dreams about how this would look. I'm also starting to add in a little bit of raw umber, which doesn't do much, but if you look here and you see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scrape some raw umber in, in here, right? And just kind of give it a little bit. And then I go in with my finger and it just sort of, actually it's a little too much. I can pull some back. It just sort of warms it up a little, makes it look a little, you know, dirt is never one color. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah. Oh. There you are. It feels it feels more right. I'm 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 beholden to the object itself. Now, oh man, so good. I'm so happy with this. Great, the last thing is to put in the acrylic visor and then to try it on. I will have the ability to pipe air into here and keep my face cool. Keep your face cool, man! See if I can do it again. Here we go. Nope. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the first one day build associated with 2018's Comic Con San Diego costume. Wiley Post's helmet. This is actually not bad at all. I have a very clear field of view. It's totally easy to see in here. I can move some air through here, through this uh, 
through this port right here. This is fantastic. I'm very pleased to space. <laughs> All right, if I'm gonna walk the floor of Comic-Con as Wiley Post, a helmet isn't enough. <sighs> I am gonna need to make the suit that goes with the helmet. Uh, the boots and the gloves are being dealt with separately. Um, we'll bring those in at the end of this build, but for right now, I have to make all the soft parts. And in order to do that, I'm gonna use some of this cotton duck canvas. It's got the texture that I need. There is a bit of quilting to uh, two Wiley Post's suit, and that was actually by design. It was uh, cross-hatched squares, what they, I think what was later called link netting, was a way to hold the rubber bladder inside in its proper orientation so it couldn't expand. So I'm gonna start by, by making patterns and then quilting those patterns and then assembling them into the arms, the torso, and the legs. And Wiley's suit, uh, the innovation he made, well, not an innovation, because this is how diving suits worked at the time, is it's neck entry. You entered the suit through this hole in the neck, and I'm going to do the same thing. Um, let's see, what else is there to cover? Oh, right, he included metal rings at the elbows and the knees. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna use this eighth inch welding wire as those rings. I'm gonna wrap around them, probably with some of the canvas and some Velcro. Uh, and then there's some final leather work to do on the outside. It's just a, a long day of sewing is ahead of us. That's what's, that's what's about to happen. Draw on myself. <laughs> I'm gonna need to draw upon myself. So, yeah. I guess I should, yeah. I'm, I'm averse to drawing on this mannequin because I have yet to really mess it up, but I guess here's how we do it. Yeah, there we go. Maybe I'll give it a coat of paint later someday. So when I built the helmet, I built it with Velcro on the inside of the neck piece. And that's to match up with Velcro that will go on the suit that I am currently making. So I'm gonna put this guy aside. That's the neck entry hole that will be there. And we'll go from there. All right, there is a lot more to this suit than meets the eye. It is not just a cotton tunic. There are a lot of chunks to take care of. First and foremost, there is this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven stitch quilted band that goes from the front chest to the back. So I'm gonna get that one first. And slowly make the, actually, it looks like I should probably do this pattern first because this goes all the way to the shoulders. Yeah, let me do that one first. Okay. How best to, oh, this is right. Okay. I think I've come to an understanding here. I'm gonna grab a bucket. Oh, from my bathroom. I was like, how am I gonna transfer the pattern of the inside of the helmet to the cloth? And then I realized I can put it onto a bucket like this. And do it like that, right? Right. Great, great. Mm-hmm. I see. <clears throat> the right width. First, I want to sew these darts. I got a new toy, a thread snipper just for doing this on the sewing machine. Doink. Oh, so much better than dragging out the big scissors.
This lies nice and flat. It does. I'm happy with that. Okay, so now we trim. Uh, wait, what's the front? Uh, let's start in the back. Let's start where you can't see. That's a great idea. Shoulders have these little darts that go across them. And this piece will be and there. Ah, that's going to be just about 60 inches. Cool. I won't be able to attach it onto this thing because I won't be able to get it back off of this thing. But that tells me roughly how. Yeah, that's me. I don't have to measure it again on me. To sewing. Just up to here. This the problem is it's not me. This is this is clothing, so I have to get this to wrap around in the right way, and then to wrap around and this stuff is quilted. Alright. Okay. Time to make a pattern or two. There's a lot going on, uh, so I'm gonna, this has clothes on it, so I can't quite build something tight to it under the armpits, so I've sort of mocked up the, the top part here, and let's just see if I can't get this on my body and confirm my measurements. Let's also hope that I don't get oh, pierced by any of these needles. That's not bad. That was one of the reasons for doing this, was to 
bring this up here and figure out where it goes, which is right about there. Yeah, that seems pretty nice, pretty straightforward. Uh, oh, all right. Well, we may end up adding a zipper. That's just all there is to that. So clearly, clearly what goes on here is that there would be a tunic for me that comes, I basically have to fill this portion. Today's uh, quilted spacesuit comes courtesy of a metric crap ton of bobbins. I don't mean to get technical on you. Uh, but I need, uh, my, my bobbin winder has, uh, its little pressure wheel has just slowly deteriorated over time. So now I'm trying to figure out if I can replace that pressure wheel with something else. That looks like it'll do. I see. It goes through this top hole, then through the tensioner, then through the bottom hole. Okay. That's, I was just about to do that with my finger and then I saw that there was already a thing for it. All right, so, so I've, uh, this has a, this has a setting it sticks at, okay. right there. And if you hold on to the end when you start, You want to just guide it so it, look at that. Bingo. Awesome. There's one down. So, all of these. <laughs> all right. We're getting somewhere. Let's cut out some more muslin. Try putting this on. All right, let's try this. This is starting to look like something. I can just tell right now, this is gonna be awesome. But I have to get out of this thing, hold on. Yeah, I'm just gonna to have to run a zipper straight up the back, a nice big white zipper. Do I have one? Yeah, ha, ha. Look at that. I love obsessively buying things I think I'll need one day and then needing them. Am I gonna do that? Am I gonna do that? Yeah, it's better than, yeah, there we go. Reasonably straight cut. Next, I guess, is to quilt this puppy, right? Yeah, I gotta quilt, I gotta, yeah, I gotta quilt it. Quilters, I respect you. Yeah, this is hard, this is hard work, man. I've already gone through something like 
probably a dozen bobbins. Yeah, easily. I'm about to use up my first full spool of thread. I don't ever use up a full spool of thread on a single project. Damn. in my time. I've made a lot of different things. I have sewn hundreds of miles of thread and yet still I am such a beginner. I, the way a sleeve joins to a torso is still absolute magic to me. I'm going through like six or eight layers of this canvas at once right here. I'm very pleased with how my machine is responding to all of this. It's handling it like a champ. Ladies and gentlemen, we ended up with no bunching. No bunching. No, you know what I mean. That's totally, I'm so psyched. All right, lifting, lifting, getting it out of there. Oh. Dudes and dudettes. I am pleased with the straight jacket I'm apparently making. <laughs> now, I still can't get in the neck of this thing, can I? Let's see. Let's see. Oh, good God, that is like claustrophobic. All right. The thing is, is I can open it up a little bit more. I'm just not sure how much more. All right, so now I take another pass and do the bottom of the Velcro. All right, there is the top and a lot of little thready threads to clean up, but I've put in the Velcro which means I can now, that, which means I've removed as much of the neck as I don't need. And now I'm just gonna wonder one more time if I can make this a neck entry costume. Just make things a lot easier if I could do that. Come on. Come on. Oh, we're going with the zipper. Yep, we're going with the zipper. There's just, there's only a few people in the world who will know that that's not accurate to Wiley Post's suit and they'll forgive me. So, I'm gonna put this back in here. I'm gonna slice this puppy right up his backside. Mmm, kind of hurts, doesn't it? All right, time to break out the edge sewing foot.
ladies and gentlemen. I'm very pleased with that zipper. Here's what I now need to make. I need to make some shorts. Technically, what I've got here <laughs> I can't quite can't quite tell what's going on here, but right, so it's yeah, there we go, something like that, right right <laughs> I can't believe this is actually working. That is astounding. Okay, so if these guys do this and these guys, yeah, 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 all right. I can always take this in later or add some bunching. I mean, Lord knows there's plenty of structure on this costume. I just kind of intuited how to make these by looking at my own jeans. Seemed like a reasonable place to start. Front and center is falling in the front and center. That is non-trivial with round soft shapes meeting each other. Some of these pins are colossally dirty, but that's okay. The costume itself will be dirty. Here's a question I'm wondering about. What is the gender neutral term for seamstress? Seamster? Seamstrix? I, 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 you know, I'm a bro who sews, so I don't wanna, it feels sexist just to say seamstress is to someone who sews, but I don't have a, you know, I don't know. It's a good question. It's an open question. It's probably not an open question. It's probably a settled question. I just don't know the answer. All right. Sometimes a lack of institutional knowledge is an advantage. Right now, it feels like a hindrance. By institutional knowledge, I simply mean someone who would ever have taught me the sort of way to think through the order of operations of sewing a garment like this. It's, uh, it's confusing. Okay. Holy cow, have I really yeah, I've kind of done this, haven't I? So, oh, let's see here. All right. Dudes and dudettes. This is like the bathing suit, 1902. Am I showing too much skin? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try the helmet on. Uh, we are getting there. This is a good place to stop today. All, the, all one day builds take longer than a day. All right, here we go. It is all over, but for the weathering. So the form of my Wiley Post suit is complete. It now just needs to look old because it looks way brand new. Uh, I'm gonna do the old, I'm gonna do the olding. 
I'm gonna do the weathering in two passes. I'm gonna do a sort of very light yellow pass, which I'm gonna deepen in some yellow spots, and then I'm gonna add some brown spots. Uh, I think that should bring it to where I want it. Um, I'm gonna get the helmet near it so I can see it all at the same time. Yeah, let's mix some acrylics. Yep. Awesome. I'm very pleased with this. At first I had it a little too red, a little too much red in some of the colors I chose, but now, now I can see that I've got now I've got it yellower and that feels better. It feels more correct. I'm just looking for any spots that kind of look like they could use a little bit more. It's really easy when doing weathering to overdo, to overdo the regularity. And the thing about weathering is there are always spots that are weirder, right? Like, what is that? I don't know. What did he do? Did he spill a cup of coffee on a mission? I don't know, but that part is, that's a stain. And that's more realistic. Yeah. See how that, to see what that does? That's really cool. God, I love this one. All right. I think it's time to put it on. <laughs> yeah, it's been drying here for about half an hour. <laughs> I think the color is really good. I'm very pleased with the overall wash. I am gonna dirty it up a little bit more over the next few weeks before Comic-Con. Um, but I'm, I'm really pleased with this. It's time to put it on. Okay, here we go. Dudes, <laughs> I am really, really pleased with how this looks. I like how it feels. It's not too warm. It's actually, it's, this is fabulous. 